It's far from unusual for mums to return to work after having their babies. For some, it's a necessity. For others, it's a choice. For all, it is a juggle. To talk about making it work, we have mum blogger Tui Fleming back and also mum psychologist Sarah Chatwin joining us in the coffee group this morning. Great to have you both on the show. Thank Welcome, you. ladies. Thank you very much. OK, this is a big subject nowadays, Sarah. I'll start with you. There are loads of mums who work. Do you think that is a good thing? I'm a bit of an advocate of women retaining a sense of self even when they become mothers. And I think it's great if people want to go back to work to, you know, work through that and come up with something that you know works for them as it were um, and I believe that a lot of women are doing it and do it well. And Tui, do you think mums start to feel guilty about working? Yeah, absolutely. There, there's so much mother's guilt out there. And I think that our society these days with our generation of mums actually fuels that. I think we're damned if we do, we're damned if we don't. Because we're, on the one hand, we're told, get the degree, get the career, break the glass ceiling. And on the other hand, it's mums, not dads, actually, who are targeted and marketed to and expected to be that primary caregiver. Um, when I, I wrote my book, I canvassed a whole lot of mums at talking about mother's guilt generally, and work was right up there in terms of, you know, the key reason why they feel guilt. Um, and I've got a couple of quotes. If you oh, want you to know, hear from I'd, real love to, I'd love to hear them. Yeah, by all means. So, you know, as, as Sarah said, you know, um, some women choose to. So there's this mum that says, I feel guilty that I want to work and don't want to spend every hour of my day with my little man like my mum did with me. And then there's those women who have to work. It's a financial, it's a reality for them. This mum says my strongest feelings of guilt were when I had to go back to work full time when my baby was three months old. I'd cry in my breaks while expressing. That's really sad. Mm, You're a brave it? man being on the panel today, Mike, because um, men could step up a bit more, <laughs> couldn't they? <laughs> no, but I understand too because my younger sister just had a baby and you know it was interesting listening to her talk about the drama she faced when basically paying for childcare to go back to work yeah, and That's the strange. money that she was going to get if she just stayed at home. It's, it's it's much. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is hopeless, and women have to constantly juggle and think about the implications of going back to work <laughs> if they choose to become a mother as well. And I think one of the key tips is to to have a bit of a plan, isn't mm -hmm. it? Because mm -hmm. you can end up feeling so horrible in these situations. Mm. What about Tui? The notion that, and this, you know, I've heard a lot of stories about this that it's really important for a mum to stay in that early stages of the child's development at home. Yeah, I mean, there is research out there. There's a theory called attachment theory that that we've been talking about, which says that it talks about a child's emotional and social development. And many of the researchers believe that it is best for um, a child to have a primary care giver in those first few years. I mean, obviously it's ideal if that's a parent, but again, as we talked about, that's just not a reality. For some and people, yeah. I, think, I think the main thing is that it's these days it's got to be not about the, um, the quantity of time, but it's the quality. So if you're going out to work, whether or not you, you choose to or you have to, when you come back, ditch the devices, you know, be present, properly engage with your child and, and reassure them that you're that safe haven that's always going to be coming home to them. I do think that women who choose to work tend to have a bit of a plan. They know what they can give and they have a feel for what works for them. Mm. And that's why it's so crucial that, you know, you think these things through because at the end of the day, you don't want to be that mother mm. who feels so horrible, mm. you know, going back to work and, and, and has all that guilt. And as you say, there's a fair amount of guilt that women will have anyway, but I think they're learning to, to work things, you know, a part-time scenario or a job share mm -hmm. scenario mm -hmm. that can allow them to work yeah. and be a mother at the same time. And, and a lot of people work from home as well, they which do. allows them that opportunity with the you know modern era of the internet. Yep. Things are a little bit easier. Okay, I just wanted to quickly touch on whether or not we've got the balance right in this country when it comes to, mm. I guess, government support versus mums trying mm. to be there, present for their babies, there, present for their families. Yeah. You know, do, we uh, may not. <laughs> well, <laughs> we, well, let's look at Sweden. Mums need more support. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think that I'm, I'm not certain, but I think it's a, it's a year full paid. Parental leave. Wow. I mean, I, it's brilliant. Uh, yeah, it's really I brilliant. Was, when I went um, on maternity leave, I think it was 14 weeks, and it might have been three or four hundred dollars a week, which would um, have been a significant drop for oh, you in absolutely, pay. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it's nice, but and that's why so many people go back after that kind of 12 to 14 week 
period. It's Which like a demotion. Are, are still babies. <laughs> right, still so babies. so a, a bit more support from the government would be helpful be in nice. this country. Yes, yes. Yeah. As we get closer to the election, we'll push yeah, yeah, this yeah. more, right? <laughs> but it is doable, though, for a mum to be a working mum and still achieve everything that she needs to achieve. you just got to have all those checks and balances yeah, in place. Yeah. So you need to manage yeah. your own expectations as well. You know, not Definitely. be so hard on yourself. We don't have to do it all. It's fine if there's washing in the, you know, in the background. It's fine if you have takeaway. You know, it doesn't matter if your kids just eat plain pasta one night. Uh, like, I, I, think, I think also, before you start making plans about going back to work, have your baby and see what that yeah. baby needs That's and see right. what that baby's like. And see what you feel like. Because I thought that I would be a full stay-at-home mum, like forever. That was it. No more work. And come nine months, I was like, <laughs> I can't do nursery rhymes every day. <laughs> Brain freeze. <laughs> hey, great advice. Thank you so much, Thank Tui you. and Sarah. And this is Tui's book. If you have not yet got a copy, you should. Thanks for coming in today, ladies. Really Pleasure. enjoyed that. Thank you.